So we've talked at length about what benzene doesn't do. Now let's think about what it does do. And the big reaction type that it does are called electrophilic aromatic substitutions. So aromatic because they're aromatic compounds. Substitutions because we're not adding things, we're substituting one thing for another. And it's electrophilic because if we think about this benzene ring right here, that huge big puffy cloud of pi electrons is really going to attract electrophiles. We can say the benzene is nucleophilic, but much more importantly, the attacking group is an electrophile. So let's just have a generic electrophile here, E, for electrophile. And plus, just to emphasize the fact that this is an electrophile, it likes electrons. So anyway, benzene plus an electrophile goes to a substitution in which the hydrogen that I have drawn here gets replaced by the electrophile and you leave H+. Plus. Um, very, very naughty of me to just say E plus and H plus because even that's what's actually going on. It's very rare that it's truly an E plus. It's certainly not something you can bottle and stick in there. And of course, the H plus is going to go and do things like H pluses do. But anyway, that's the general thing. We need an electrophile that is going to substitute one of the hydrogens on the benzene ring. Now, there's quite a few different possible electrophiles. Um, the WJEC spec calls for us to think about three, although I'm going to introduce a couple more within the core material as mini extensions. So anyway, one of the big electrophiles is chlorine or bromine, just generically called X there. So of course, if we have an X replacing the H, then we get this would be a chlorobenzene if X is Cl or a bromobenzene if X is Br. Now we can't just stew up our benzene with our chlorine or our bromine, we need a catalyst. And that catalyst is either an iron chloride bromide or an aluminium chloride or bromide. And these collectively are often called Friedel Crafts catalysts for reasons that you're going to see in a minute. Anyway, so we can chlorinate the benzene ring, we can brominate the benzene ring. We can nitrate the benzene ring with NO2. The reagent we use for that is a nitric acid, concentrated nitric acid. And then when you stew up benzene with concentrated nitric acid, you will nitrate the ring. But again, you need a catalyst, and that catalyst is concentrated sulfuric acid. So uh, this is actually one of the very common A-level reactions where you take a, a substituted benzene, you stew it up with a lovely mixture of concentrated nitric and concentrated sulfuric acid, and you nitrate the ring. Now, I mentioned Friedel Crafts a little while ago because a very common electrophilic aromatic substitution is where you put an alkyl group on the benzene ring. And the reagent used for that is an alkyl halide because, of course, alkyl halides, as you won't remember from a previous module, are amazing synthetic reagents. And so you put the alkyl group attached to the benzene ring. Thus, for example, if uh, the alkyl group was CH3, this would be toluene or methyl benzene or, of course, ethyl benzene and so on and so on and so on. Again, you need a catalyst and it's one of those Friedel Crafts catalyst because the reaction in which you alkylate a benzene ring is called a Friedel Crafts alkylation. So anyway, there are the three reactions that we're going to really focus on. They will be part of the next few movies after we've talked about the general mechanism. So our general mechanism, here's benzene. As we've said, lots and lots of electrons there. Now, I'm drawing this out with the um, defined double bonds. And you'll see why I'm doing that in a minute. But I'm also laying the groundwork for something um, that's in the extension material that I think is really, really important. And that's having a closer look at all of these mechanisms with some extra information added in. But anyway, here's our benzene ring. There's our electrophile E plus okay and of course that E plus is going to say hello to some of the electrons from the benzene ring so we'll take one of our drawn localized double bonds there we'll move a couple of the electrons from um, the carbon carbon bond to make a new bond with our electrophile and we get this species here now let's be sure you see what's happening as usual with our little curly arrows 
Okay, we're taking two electrons from here and we're making a bond to the E+. Plus. So this carbon here, the way I've drawn it, it's the one that continues to bond. So as far as this carbon's in concern, you don't care, it's still got another bond. Um, it was another bond to this carbon, a pi bond to this carbon, but now it's using uh, electrons to make a sigma bond to the electrophile. But of course this carbon here has now lost its bond and so it is positive. Okay, so here is the intermediate associated with our generic electrophilic substitution. Right now, of course, we just added the electrophile for it. Now, in most of your A-levels, you will have seen this depicted like this, a so-called Wieland intermediate. And what we're showing here is that this positive charge is actually delocalized all the way around the ring. And in the extension material, the first slide will be where I show you how we delocalize that positive charge all the way around the ring. So this is what this is showing you here. Positive charge delocalized and a tetrahedral carbon that's part of the ring has its hydrogen and the electrophile on it. Well, at this stage, um, we can either remove the electrophile to go back to what we were, or we can abstract the proton. And we'll talk about different ways in which that can happen, but essentially something will come up, say hello to the H saying, hey, come with me. So the hydrogen says, OK, I don't need this bond here. So the electrons that were bonding to the hydrogen now go and replenish the double bond here, thus giving you the final product. And it's H plus that I put in quotes floating away up there because, of course, something had to abstract it. Something had to tempt it away from this Wieland intermediate. So that's the general mechanism for an electrophilic aromatic substitution. And as we go through, we're going to be looking for a couple of things. First of all, where does the electrophile come from? As I say, you can't just pull down a bottle of E plus from the shelf and react it in. And then the other thing we have to worry about in this simplistic mechanistic um, discussion is what is going to be abstracting that H plus to get us to the final product. Okay, so two big questions. How do we get the E plus and how do we take away the H plus?